rivers of heaven, and he watered the furrows thereof. And so we just thank God for life, health, and strength, and we thank him for his son Jesus, whom he sent into the world to die, so that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. Amen. Thank God for all of you that are here in the house tonight. Amen. Truly the Lord is good. Amen. Thank God for the visitors that are here. Thank God for them. And also, once again, we thank God for Amen. Sister Strong. Let's give the Lord a praise for her. Amen. Church to know and understand tonight is that though 
those times that God spoke about are on the way. Don't you notice that everybody's looking for good times? Amen. The politicians, they're, they're promising better times. Amen. Every election, everybody's saying they're going to make it better. But trust me, church, I don't care who you put in the House of Assembly. I don't care who sits in the White House. I don't care who goes to number 10 Downing Street. I don't care who sits in the palaces of the world. If the Bible says perilous times shall come, those times are on the way. And the Bible says you and I must do what? Save ourselves from this on to a generation. Save yourself. Amen. The trouble sometimes are coming. I say they're coming. Daniel chapter 12. Everybody have it say amen. Verse 1 says what? At that time, shall Michael stand up? Shall Michael stand up? Uh-huh. The great prince was does what? Stand for the children of thy people. Stand for the children of thy people. Uh-huh. There shall be a time of trouble. Listen to this, church. There shall be a time. It's coming. There shall be a time of trouble. Such as what? Such as never was since there was a nation. So in other words, World War I, World War II, Iraq War, the Korean War, the Vietnamese War, the Afghan War, all the other little sporadic fightings in and around the world. There will be no fight like in this day that the Bible is speaking about. There'll be no trouble like this day that's coming that the Bible is speaking about. So it behooves you and I to draw nigh to God. And if you draw nigh to God, what's going to happen? God will draw nigh to you. And so we ought to be hid with Christ and God. Amen? Please read that again. What does it say? There shall be a time of trouble. Not at that time. scriptures concerning prophecy on things that are yet to come. Amen? Which will take us a whole new series to deal with as it relates to this particular verse of scripture. But the key in there I want you to understand is God is saying to the church there is coming a time of trouble. So gird up the loins of your minds and be strong. Amen? And the Bible says hope to the end for the salvation that is going to be delivered to us. Amen? And the revelation of Jesus Christ. We are living in the last day. Listen to what's going on around the world. Notice the focus and the attention that is being paid to Israel. Israel is a little small country in the Middle East, minding its own business. And everybody talking about taking them out. In Israel, there ain't nobody now. Amen. And so, according to Daniel chapter 12, she's going to go through some trouble. She's going to go through some trials. Amen. But before we get to that, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. What we want to look at is events that are presently taking place and that which is about to take place. And the more you read these, uh, study these prophecies as it relates to the last days, it, it makes you know that you need to draw closer and closer to, to God with each coming day. Amen? We know that we're living in the time when the Antichrist is about to be revealed, but before he's revealed, the church will be taken out of here. He's called the man of sin. He's called the beast. Amen. He's called the son of perdition. And he has many different names. And trust me, church, he will be revealed. The Bible says, only he who lets will let until he be taken out of the way. Then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and with the brightness of his coming. And that sharp two-edged sword that goeth forth out of his mouth. The Antichrist will be slain. Amen. And his body given to the burning flames according to the word of God. And so in this hour, you got to watch out for the Antichrist spirit. Anybody that goes against God and goes against Christ has the Antichrist spirit. Yeah. Amen? In, 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 in the epistle of John, we find in, in the second chapter, the word of God says, little children, it is the last time. And as you've heard that 
Antichrist shall come, even now are there what? Many Antichrists in the world. They, have, they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But the Bible says they went out that they may be made what? Manifest that they were not all of us. So anybody that's kicking against the word of God, kicking against the gospel of Jesus Christ, has the spirit of Antichrist. So, that's why I said earlier, we've got time to argue the scriptures. If God said it, we believe it. Can the church say amen? amen? You and I are in no position to try and second guess God. Whatever God says, he means, and it's a settled matter. Can the church say amen? amen? And so in 2 Peter, chapter 3, if you have it, say amen. We'll look at verse number 1. Verse number 1. What does it say? This, this second epistle, beloved, I now want write unto you in both which I do what? No, those who God said, I want to stir up your pure mind. God wants your mind to be pure in this hour. Hey, listen, the trumpet can sound tonight. It can sound now. Your name could be called presently. Stir up your pure minds by what? Way of remembrance. Uh-huh. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken. See, in other words, you, you've heard this thing before. Time and time again, you've come into the house of God. You've heard the preaching. Amen. You've studied the word of God. Now, the word of God is saying that you may be what? Mindful. God wants you to go back. He wants you to remember. Amen. That you may be mindful of what? Of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. And of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Verse 3 says what? So God is saying you got to know something. What must you know? That there shall come when? In the last days, scoffers walking after their own lusts. Look at what is happening today in today's generation. The world has gone mad after the spirit of lust. Can the church say amen? amen? And everybody walking after their own lust. Wanting to do, and notice it, they, they want to do their own thing, but it's still a church. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Amen. The homosexuals, they got their church. Yes. And they're saying they're right. Amen? amen. They're saying they're right. So it's a, you got to watch, there is a religious spirit today that is circling the globe. God wants you to be aware of it so that you don't become entangled in this thing. You church say that? Yeah. Knowing this verse, that there shall come when? In the last days. What's coming, church? Scoffers. Walking after their own love. See, they're going to be making fun and mocking the gospel. Amen. Everybody want to know why you got to live like this. Why you got to do this. Why it's none of your business how I live my life. Amen. I'm living for God. Amen. Can you try to say amen? amen? They always want to question. You never really, when you were in sin, they didn't question you. Okay. They're not. Why you like to smoke rock Why you why you smoking so much dope? Hello. Why you like poorly girls so much? They didn't ask you those things. They came here asking for something. Amen. Am I right about it? They wanted to help you with it. But as soon as you got saved, and they hand you a sin, you say, I'm sorry, I don't smoke. Why? What do you mean, why? Yeah. I do love my body. Anybody love their body? Amen. Huh? Why you don't drink liquor? I do love my liver. Yes, sir. God put it there for another purpose other than to process alcohol. Can the church say amen? Mm -hmm. And so, they're going to come in the last days, scoffers. People will be mocking you laughing at you, ridiculing you, walking after their, what, what are they walking after, church? Their own, their own lust. But what are they going to say? Say, where is the promise? I've been hearing this thing, but Jesus coming, where, where is he? You go tell folks nowadays that Jesus is coming so mad, they in a long time. Mama used to tell me about that. That's a papa that used to talk about that. Where is the promise of his coming? Or what else do they say? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were. In other words, things still going on. What do you 
to be lost and still going on right now. Amen. Amen. There are people literally who are not expecting the return of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are people literally living right now do not expect that one day they're going to die. Amen. Where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the other patriarchs, they're all gone. Oh man, listen, things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Look at the next verse. What does it say? This they are. See, in other words, people are ignorant because they want to be ignorant. Yes. For this they are willingly ignorant of what? That by the word of God. That by the word of God. The heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. And the world that then was made what? Overflowed with water, perished. Now, have you read that in the Bible? Amen. When God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and the imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually, and the word of God says in Genesis, the sixth chapter, that God repented him that he had made man upon the earth. Amen. And he said, I'm going to destroy man whom I have made on the earth for that is very nature is corrupt. Amen. He's corrupt. Amen. But then the Bible says, but Noah found what? Grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And then so God moved that Noah and said to Noah, listen, I'm going to destroy this world, but I want you to make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Picture it in and picture it out. Amen. And I want you to gather the animals and bring them in two by two on the unclean and seven by sevens with the clean. You and your son and your daughters-in-laws and your wife. Amen. For thee, this is what he talking about. For thee have I what? Seen righteous in this generation. Amen. How many would like for when God is going to come? I mean, he has his angels ready to bring you up because he said, I've seen you what? Righteous in this generation. Amen. Is there no time for us to talk to church? You got to walk in and live it. And so the earth standing out of the water and in the water, so that the world that then was being what? Overflowed. The Bible tells us in the, in the book of Genesis that the waters covered the mountains. Amen. That's the power of God. Now you know Mount Everest is over 27,000 feet going up into the sky. That was a whole lot of water. Where did it come from? God says he broke up the fountains of the deep and then he opened the floodgates of heaven. Can the church say amen? Water came down from above, came up from underneath. God destroyed them all. But he saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Amen. In the church, say amen. amen. And so we understand what he's saying here. Amen. But they are willingly ignorant. You know how many people have heard the story? Do you know how many nations in the world have their own little legend about Noah? Every nation in the world knows about Noah and the ark. They play crazy. Some time ago, I, I, I read a documentary where the Russians flying over Mount Ararat saw the ark embedded in the ice. And they hushed that up. Why? Because the Russians say, there is no God. <laughs> so there shouldn't be such a thing as Mount Ararat with an ark on it according to Genesis. What Genesis tells us, church, the ark rested where? On Mount Ararat. Scourge. Right there. Right there. And so those Russian pilots flying in their, 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 their war machines, flying over the mountains, they saw the ark. Hello. They saw it. Because the ice up there in the mountain preserved the gopher wood. Now you think they can come down and go to Red Square in Moscow and say, listen, God is real. We saw the ark. Repent of his sins. Instead, they came down saying, there ain't no God. That's what the word of God is saying. They are what? Willingly ignorant. Do you realize that even people who play crazy when they stand before God, all crazy people become sensible? Amen. It can be no, you know, it can be no crazy man standing before God that day, you know. You think 
be anybody that told me. Every mind is straightened up. Huh? Trust me, church. The Bible says the dead who? Small and great. The old and the young. You think you're stupid? When you stand before God, you have all the sense. Church, say amen. He can be no crazy man of them. The word says, for this day I was willingly ignorant. Mm -hmm. Earth standing out of the water and in the water, so that the world that there was being overflowed with water perish. Am I right about it? Amen. Now tie that into the next verse. What does it say? What's the word but? The first world perish by water. What does God say? Now, if that happened then, now he's letting us know water ain't coming the next time. Now we know from the scripture water came the first time. He told us that. Amen. Now he's telling you and I, the church, it ain't going to be water this time. Hello? Uh -huh. But the heavens and the earth which are now by what? The same word. Listen, the same word that sent the water is the same word that's letting us know it is kept in what? In store, reserved. This, listen, you, you ought to realize the earth have a reservation for fire. Amen. The earth has an appointment with fire. Amen. The fire is reserved with this. It's had its baptism of water. Now it's going to have a baptism of fire. Amen. Question is, where do you want to be in that day? Amen. Now we know from Noah's day, only seven people believe Noah. You know. Can you imagine that? This man building this big old boat, telling them God will send water. 120 years the ark was preparing. 120 years the ark was preparing. And yet still at the end of the day, only seven people believed Noah. And seven people went into that boat. The monkey had more sense than man. Right. Hmm. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. And the thing about it is when Noah went into the boat, the Bible says, and the Lord shut him in. See, because if Noah had shut the door, and you hear your uncle out there, and your auntie out there, and your cousin out there, and everybody knocking out there, you might have been tempted to open the door. But when God shut it, no man can open it. Amen, Amen church? Amen. So let's live for that day, because listen, the appointment of the earth with fire, it is reserved unto fire. Amen? Read that again. Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. This is amazing how they laugh at Christians. They try to make you feel so bad, you know, because you're not out there doing all those things that cause you go to hell. And they, but they have a judgment coming. Perdition. When you see the word perdition in the Bible, it means that, you know, that's a soul that's gone straight to hell. Mm. Judas was called the son of perdition. The Antichrist is the son of perdition. Ungodly men are men of perdition. Headed straight to hell. No detour. Is that where you want to go? Read verse 8. But be not ignorant of this one thing. Listen to what God's saying now. He's talking to us. That one day I don't want y'all to be ignorant. The See, the world out there is willingly ignorant. You know, they, they, they want to be fooled. But God is saying to the church, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one. In other words, you see, you know, to us we talk about, boy, a long time, but a thousand years is just like a day to God. So while we might be walking around saying, man, it's taking long to God, it's only been but a day. He's a 
how you think it is. And the shortest day on earth can be when the Lord comes. Can the church say amen? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day with the Lord is a thousand years, but a thousand years is one day. So why hasn't he come yet? Read the next verse. The Lord is not slack. Concerning what church? God made a promise. But he is what? No. Suffering. It's not like man called it. He is what? No. You realize how long God been waiting on this world? He's just waiting on someone else. Get it right. You thought God woke you up this morning so you could go to work? To go to school? He gave you another opportunity to make all the little wrong things right. And it doesn't take long. Just you and God, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's all God wants, man, to dialogue with him. God is not willing. Is that what the book say? He is not willing that any should perish. How many? How many, church? All do what? All should come to repentance. There ain't not a soul going to stand before God in the day of judgment and say, Lord, there wasn't a room on the heart for me. But that book was big enough. Can you enjoy saying amen? amen? Are you making it right with God? He's given you another day. How long does it take? How long does it take to say, Father, please forgive me? I'm sorry for my sins. How long does that take? Seconds. You would make it sound like it's so hard. You know, like you must get going to look away so you didn't then get a degree in repentance. You guys study for 10 years. So I can get my eyes proper and my TH is in place to say, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Hello? When Philip was finished teaching the eunuch, he came to a place where there was lots of water. And the eunuch said, hey, here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? Quick as that. The man heard the gospel from Isaiah 53. Philip explained the word to him. He saw the body of water, so Philip must have told him he needed to repent and be baptized. He said, see water here? What's it stop me? He said, yes, all you got to do is believe. If you believe, thou mayest. And the brother believed. Right. Went down into the water. Salvation is the most simplest thing in the world. Simply believe the gospel. Amen. Did Jesus die for your sins? Amen. Was he buried? Amen. Did he rise again the third day? Amen. Did he ascend into heaven? Amen. Seated at the right hand of majesty? Oh, Ever living to do what? Make Amen. intercession Amen. for you and I? Believest thou this? Confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart. Amen. That is the basis of salvation. Oh God. Not how much time you pray. Not how much books in the Bible you read. Not how much time you come to church. But simply believe the gospel. Read that verse again. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men come slack but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, those who said, not is long suffering to us, word, to everybody. Amen. He's not willing. And how many know God has to punish sin? Oh, yes. That's why He gives us the opportunity to rid yourself of it. Because the wages of sin. It's the consequences. It is the pain. It doesn't change. Wow. It's the wages of sin. Death. But the gift of God is what? Through Jesus Christ. Now look at that 10 verse. But the day of the Lord. Do I hear that church? How is it going to come? It will come as a thief. <laughs> you ever see a thief send you an email and say, hey, come on tonight, I can't have everything you got in your house. No, I'll be 
there around at 2 o'clock in the morning, okay? Sign Mr. T. Does he tell you that? No. No, he's out there spying. He when, either when you turn off the light or when you go out somewhere. Amen. And he does what? Tip it in. God wants the church to know, just like our thief don't give you no warning, the day of the Lord, the judgment of God. He didn't say it might come. It will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens, listen to this church, what will happen in the heavens? It shall pass away with what? Brother, you talk about man will be miserable in that day. Can you imagine waking up one morning, walking down the streets of London town, and all of a sudden you hear nothing but noise in the heaven, and then what the Bible says in Revelation 6 and, and in the book of Isaiah, the heavens start rolling up. Where the biggity fella can run that? Every drunk man can be sober. That wasn't going to be a sight, church, because the Bible says that heaven shall what? Roll together like a scroll when it's rolled together. And Peter is telling us it's going to be what? A great noise. That's why I tell you all, church, cease from man, the Bible says, whose bread is in his nostril, for where is he to be accounted of? Don't worry about what people got to say. You better worry about what your Bible is saying. Because one day, brother, I don't care who's your buddy, who's your friend, and all y'all walking down the road, and all of a sudden, all this is... You see how people just jump and carry on when they hear one thunder? Yeah. You got grown man right now that's running in the bed. Don't he say nothing? Maybe some of y'all are getting scared of thunder. One little cop of thunder, they're running. Close the window. Shut the door. You know, move, in, move, move from the glass. <laughs> Hello. Amen. What's more if you're walking down the road and all of a sudden, brother, all you hear is a rumbling in the sky and then you look up, east going one way and west going the next way. You better read that 10 verse again. How it's going to come? But the day of the Lord God might come. It will come as a thief in the night. In the witch. He tells you how it's going to happen. What's going to happen? The heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And something else is going to happen. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You, you, you thought it was bad. First, the heaven them split apart. Then all of a sudden, everything gets hot. The elements, earth, wind, and fire. Start melting. Uh -huh. What kind of heat? Pray tell me, church, where you want to be in that day. You, you, you do not want to be on this earth when this is taking place. That's why you need to do what? What does the scripture say? Make your calling and election sure. I'm just showing you what's going to happen after, after the church is gone. Those walking on the earth who have rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ, these are the consequences they're going to have to face. Amen? Heaven shall pass away with what? A great noise. And the elements shall melt with what? Fervent heat. The earth also. You all hear that, church? All the Cadillacs, all the Mercedes Benz, Hello, all the split devil homes, all the castles and palaces of the world. Hello, all the slum dwellings. No matter what it is. I, I don't know about you, but I believe what the book says. What the book say? The earth also and the works that are therein shall be what? Burned up. Now, look at verse 11, church. What does it say? See, yeah, that all these things shall be Now, God don't answer the question. In other words, he has explained to the church. He has let me and you know. Now, you see, you understand all this going to happen? Seeing then that all these things shall be what? Dissolved. What word 
dissolve me. And it can melt. Everything will just fall apart. This sort of earth, terra firma that you stand upon. It's gonna melt. Read that eleven verse again. Saying that all these things shall be dissolved. He asks us a question. What is the question? What manner of, what manner of persons are ye? In other words, since these things can happen, what kind of man of war you should be? Huh? Seeing that this is what is going to take place, this is where the world is headed. God is asking you and I the question, what manner of persons ought ye to be in what? All holy conversation. In what? Godliness. In other words, church, this is the hour to live godly. Now, what's so hard with living godly? Can you imagine? We got to say to us, listen, in all, this is in order to escape what is coming down the road. And the word says in Hebrews, how shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? So salvation is the way of escape for the slave. There's no other way to escape. The scripture asks the question, how shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Your soul. You know how easy this thing would be if the pastor could repent for everybody? I tell you all, stay home, I can, I can repent for you all. You got to do this thing for yourself. It's a personal thing. Amen, Amen church. So God wants us to have what holy conversation. Now look at verse 12. Looking for and what? You know, church, this thing coming fast, you know. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Listen to this. Where in the You hear that, church? Now, in addition to the elements and the great noise, well, this is going to be a sight. All mankind everywhere, they're going to look up and the heaven is ablaze. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire, what's going to happen to a church? Shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with fervor. Everything you see on there will burn. In other words, God got a special fire to burn this world. Question again, where do you want to be in that day, church? The choice is yours. Read on. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. We according to his promise. Now when all this will happen, we according to what? His promise. See, he made a promise to us what the promise is. Look for a new heaven. We're going to a new one, church. Right I say we go into a new heaven. Amen. We go into a new earth where in dwelling what? Righteousness. That's all going to be there. Hallelujah. Why not live it now? Because in the new heaven and the new earth is nothing but righteousness. Amen. You know wrong is there now. Yeah. You can be no two men walking down the road talking about their same sex marriage. Yeah. No two women talking about their love. Mm -hmm. What's going to be over there, church? Righteousness. You can be no teeth, no rubber. No liar. Everything over there will be right all the time. Right, right, amen, right. Amen. What's dwelling over there? Righteousness. Righteousness. Can the church say amen? amen? The question is, don't you want to go? Make your calling an election sure. Now, look at verse 14. Wherefore, we love it. Now the question before we go for this, are you looking for such things? Who are you looking for the new heaven? You want to go into God's new kingdom? Oh my God. How many of you are expecting, according to John 14, a new mansion Amen. that is prepared for you? Amen. How many of you are expecting one day to walk them streets of gold? Come on now. Amen. And to drink water from the river of water of life coming out from underneath the throne of God? How many of 
of you expecting one day to see that tree whose leaves are for the healing of the nation that bears 12 manner of fruit every month? How many are looking forward to that day when they be coming from the east, the west, the north, and the south, from every nation, kindred, and town? They shall all be singing praises unto Almighty God. Brother, you talk about a choir. There's going to be some singing in that day. Are you looking for it? Um, are you looking for it? So, read with what it again. Therefore, beloved, say that you look for such things. Be diligent. Work at this thing. Amen? Don't let the devil steal it from you. Be what? Diligent. That you may be found in of him in peace. How? Without spot. Without spot. And blameless. How does that take place? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The blood will wash you. It will purge you. It will clean you right up. But you just need to trust him. Amen. Isaiah 1, 16 says what? Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Amen. Learn to do good. Seek to do well. Come now. Let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be a scholar. What do you say? I will make them. You can't do it. Not a one of us can clean about ourselves. God said, you come to me, I can do the cleaning. I will make you as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He said, but if you be willing, I mean that you shall what? Eat. Anybody want to eat the good? Huh? Now, look at what you say. An account. That the long suffering of our Lord. Why are we still here? It's the long suffering of God. It's salvation. Why he hasn't come yet? It's the long suffering of God. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is what? Salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. God has given us ample time and opportunity to make it right. Amen. Amen. Have you done anything contrary to anybody today? Make it right. Or contrary to God, make it right. Amen. That's all it is. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Uh huh. Read on. Verse 16. Uh huh. Speaking, Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest to their own destruction. Amen? There are people that literally go into the word of God and they twist the scriptures and destroy their soul. That's why I said tonight, leave the word as it is. Amen, church? Don't mess with it. Leave it as it is. Read verse 16 again. Uh-huh. Hard to be understood. Which they are that are unlearned and unstable, rest as they do also other scriptures under their own destruction. You got people walking around with the Bible saying they can live with this number saying. And they destroy themselves. Amen. Look at verse 17. What does it say? Uh -huh. I think I better read that again. We have to scan. Everybody read it together. Ye therefore, beloved. Uh huh. Beware. Warning. Watch out. Lest you also 
steady with God. And what must you do? The last words tells you. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. And Savior Jesus Christ. To him be what? Glory. Both now and forever. Both now and forever. Stay in the Word. And as you stay in the Word, coming soon. This though also, that in the last days, what's coming church? Perilous times. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, proud, and loose. Let's all stand. Thank God for the word tonight. Trust and pray that the word of God is going to bless you your soul. Amen. And that you will be diligent to be found of him in peace. Holiness and all godliness. Amen. Bow your heads at this time. My Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word tonight. God, I pray that the hearts of thy people have been enlightened. And Lord, by this word, we will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bless your people tonight with a mighty understanding of your word as we continue to search the scriptures, as we are commanded by our Lord. When then we think we have eternal life, these are they that testifies of you. Bless our visitors that are in the house, that their hearts also will be enlightened by the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. In Jesus' name. Thank God for our visitors. Thank God for the young lady right there. Amen. Give the Lord a praise for her. Appreciate coming. Amen. Thank God for Sister Marty. Amen. Thank God for all the children. We want to be back in Bible study on Friday night again by the grace of God. Until then, amen. Shake hands, be in peace among yourselves. Don't forget to pray for those that are sick among us. Amen. According to our Lord, our sister, little sister, faith.